As an avid synth reviewer, I'm always on the lookout for new and exciting gear to show on this channel, and recently I stumbled upon this very strange instrument called an electric bass that I decided to review, and I have to tell you, there's some pretty suspicious stuff going on here, and it's time for the world to know the truth about it. Hi, welcome to the Midlight Synthesis. Let's get started. For starters, the name itself is very misleading since this sucker right here has no electrical inputs whatsoever. I even tried to hotwire it DIY style and the results were not great. I researched a few basses on Sweetwater and there seem to be some that take batteries, but come on. Batteries? What is this, 1994? Ever heard of lithium? If I want to play with something that takes batteries, I'll buy a Game Boy, thank you very much. The Bass is a four voice polyphonic analog oscillator synthesizer. Think about it as an Eurorack module because it doesn't come with any LFOs, amplifiers, envelopes, or any internal effects at all for that matter. On the front panel, you get two knobs, one for the volume, and one for something that they call tone, which is a fancy and marketing way of saying it has a cheapo, non-resonant, low-pass filter tacked onto it. You get a single quarter inch jack and that's it. No audio inputs, no USB, no 5-pin MIDI, nothing. I have no idea how the hell the creators of this thing expect for it to be used with other gear or even keep in time with other synths and drum machines and I sincerely doubt that any professional musicians would trust this thing on stage. The bass has some very basic MP and it recognizes tap, pluck, pick, and slap. You do get a bit of pitch bending, so you can get some expression out of it, but I wish it came with an app so you could better fine tune the sensitivity curves, because sometimes it sounds great, and other, it really puts the ass in bass. The sequencer on this thing is also unnecessarily complicated. Instead of the usual step sequencer or MIDI input, it relies on a complicated network of neurons firing off to trickle the muscles that control your fingers. For you to be able to play the entire sequences, you need to input the notes into your brain app over and over and over again until new neural pathways are created and they become automatic. The creator of the sequencer advertises that it doesn't have a fixed pattern length limit and that you could potentially store as many projects as you want on it. Problem is though, I found that that's kind of a false claim as newer projects tend to delete older, smaller projects as you load them in. Also, the sequencer tends to randomly delete projects after about two weeks of you not playing them. And I can't tell you how many great ideas I've lost while reviewing this thing because of that random delete function. And I highly suggest that you record your sessions into audio. Even though the bass is polyphonic, it is seemingly meant to be played monophonically in most cases, as it can get very muddy if you play all four strings in unison. It covers a pretty good range of octaves, going from this low E to this high D sharp. But let's not kid ourselves, it's got nothing on the sub 37. That's bass. Ah. <laughs> Shit. Yeah. Now, you can expand the octave range that it has and give it a bit more, you know, flavor in its sonic palette. For example, I'm using this HX Stomp XL right now to give it a bit more of, you know, interest. you can't really do on any synth and that's what brings me to a huge complaint I have with this thing. It requires you to buy a pedal or an amplifier or an audio interface in order to just hear it. I mean that's frankly outrageous for a product in 2024. Considering that it's not really a self-contained instrument I find that the pricing is gonna put a lot of people off as well. An American Professional Player 2 Precision Bass costs almost as much as an OP1 Field. That's four voices for almost $2,000. And any synthesizer lover out there will always tell you, more voices is always better. So it would really make way more sense to get a six string guitar and you get two more voices for the same price basically. And that's even if you wanna spend that kind of money because what makes it even more ridiculous is the fact that I can literally do exactly what this bass does on my phone. It sounds exactly the same. There are of course cheaper alternatives to Fender, kind of like a Behringer clone synth situation. Take this Squire Precision Bass I have right here. It's an exact copy of the Fender Precision Bass for less than half the price. Except it's kind of weird because in this case, Fender, the original company, actually owns the clone making company, Squire, which is 
pretty baller move if you ask me. All in all, I don't see the bass really catching on as a serious instrument, and I really hope that they redefine it and add some essential features like 20 gigabytes of storage, 128 megabytes of internal RAM, resampling capabilities, internal effects, Bluetooth, you know, anything that a real instrument should have nowadays. Until then, I can't really see the appeal for absolutely anything at all. As always, thank you so much for watching. I hope you found this video useful, or at least entertaining. Have a great week. See you next time.